Deuteronomy chapter 27. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Those are the leaders, the elders. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan, and you're going to go over with Joshua, unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that's what they want, that's what God's given them, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And Joshua will do this. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law. When thou art passed over, thou mayest go in unto the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. And they found rocks that have been plastered, as Moses has said here. So Moses obeyed, and there are remnants, archaeology. The Bible's true. Therefore it shall be when ye be going over Jordan, the river, that ye shall set up these stones, Joshua will, which I command you this day in Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron to upon it. Now notice, here's the first altar that God has them make since they built the tabernacle. For the Israelites, it's been the, the tabernacle, it's been the, the Ark of the Covenant, the brazen altar. This is the first time that God says, I want you to take some stones and I want you to build me an altar. And what this altar is going to be, is it's not going nowhere. It's a memorial in the land that here we were. Here is the law written on these stones. As I commanded you. And I shall build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones. You don't work them. You don't put no tool of iron on them. And thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. Now that would be not allowed anywhere else. But this is Israel. Now they're going to be in the land. Now this is the land that God has promised. Here they are. And the first thing you do in the land, you set up these stones. And you plaster these stones. You write the law on these stones. And then you have burnt offerings on these stones. And I shall offer peace offerings. And shall eat there. And rejoice before the Lord thy God. And I shall write upon the stones all the words of this law. Very plainly. Look at that. Very plainly. You get somebody who's got neat handwriting. Without a shadow of a doubt. And Moses and the priests and Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed, and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. They're going into the land. It's fulfilled. Here's a nation of God. In the land of God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Look at it. you got to do it. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, Thou shalt stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people. All right, so here, Gerizim is a blessing. When ye shall come into the land of Jordan, Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. Now look, at Joseph is listed as a tribe here. Not Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse. Here's a mountain of curse. Reuben. Well, he got a cursing by his father because he slept with his father's wife. Gad and Asher and Zebulun. Dan is a very particular tribe in the book of, in the, in the Bible is he's one that is almost like the Roman Catholic Church. He is likened to the Antichrist. It's just really nothing well spoken about him at all. And Nephetai. And a Levite shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice. Now, in this valley between Ebal and Gezerim, if anybody's done a public ministry, they would not appreciate it because the acoustics of these valley with these two mountains, they say, are wonderful. 
and it provides a loud output of sound. So the loud voices, that loud voice actually comes from these mountains in the valley. And there's going to be 12, 12 curses showing up. 12 tribes. 12 curses. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord. Dan is going to fail. And he doesn't make a molten image, but he grabs in the book of Judges, and I forgot his name now, the image, the, the ephod, and the young Levite called father. This is Dan. Unto the Lord. The work of the hands of the craftsmen. And again, that's Judges, and I can't remember his name. And put it in a secret place. Ooh, don't want anybody to see it. You know what they do at the Mass? They take the, 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 the whole stake caught and they put it in a box. And they close that box. You didn't know. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen! We hear to it. We see to it. So, di so be it. What you say, we do it. 16, curse number 2. Cursed be he that says light by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. What's that? That's telling on. That's going to the authorities, the police, or that telling on your parents. But also look, it says his father or his mother. God does not want a child to go to his to the mother and say, Oh, look what dad's doing. You see what dad's doing? And then vice versa, he does not want a child to go to the father and say, You see what mom's doing? A child has no business telling or telling on the parent. God says that's a curse, it's a sin. You're not to do it. Number three, cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. This is Ahab and Jezebel with Naboth's vineyard. Remember she had Naboth killed and go, she tells her honey bun, all right, go get the land. It's yours. And all the people shall say, amen. These are almost like prophecies. They just entered the land. And when they just entered the land, these, these rocks are set for, these stones are to be put for, they're to eat there, they're to offer sacrifice, and they're to review these 12 curses. You better not. And all the people hold to it and say, Amen, we mark it. And curse be, verse 18, curse be he that maketh the blind to wander out away. And all the people shall say, Amen. That's the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. They make the entire nation of Israel walk away from Jesus Christ, who is their Messiah. And then you got the false prophets throughout uh, the Old Testament showing up, blinding the people. But number 19, cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, Gentile, fatherless, and widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. And you're to have a proper right judgment. If you don't, you're cursed. Cursed be he, he, cursed be he verse 20, that lieth with his father's wife. There's Reuben. Because he uncovered his father's Skirt. A man shall not wear what pertains to a woman, and a woman shall not uh, follow the skirt. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Somebody must be misquoting the scriptures. Ruth tells Boaz in the middle of the night when he's laying on the pile of uh, barley, he said, Spread thy skirt over me. I guess you would just apply that figuratively and wouldn't be really a skirt but then you'd be misplying the scripture and all the people shall say amen I wonder what the Reubenites would said cursed be well look over here it says verse 13 these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben that's their father's 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 great grandfather's sin I wonder their heads like oh man now Reuben's not here but the children of Reuben Verse 21, Cursed be he that lies with any manner of beast. Bestiality. And all the people shall say, Amen. 
Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. Sarah was the daughter of his father, Abraham. Just not the daughter of his mother. A stepmother. Stepdaughter. Stepsister. Now God says that you're, that's it. No more of that. We're done. You got enough men. You got enough women. You don't need to do that no more. Now that's a curse. It wasn't a curse for Abram. But it's a curse now. And you'll see that with David's son, Amnon. He rapes Absalom's sister, Tamar. That man is cursed. And she was raped. She's innocent. You see these fall right in the line of Israel. Cursed be he that lies with his mother-in-law. Verse 23. That's gross. And all the people shall say, Amen. Notice how a lot of these are almost sexual sins. Cursed be he that smites his neighbor secretly. Murder. No one knows. And all the people shall say, Amen. That could be almost Jezebel there, but was it kind of secret? What was kind of secret? But openly, the motive was secret. And you'll find that through Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, the murder of someone secretly. Verse 25, Cursed be he that taketh the reward to slay any, uh, excuse me, slay an innocent person, a hitman, being paid to kill somebody, put a target on somebody. That's a curse. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. They're setting forth what we looked at last night. They're setting forth allegiance to God. And after that allegiance of God, all right, you are now in the land. Do you understand what God does not want you to do? Amen. Yes. Do you understand what God does not want you to do? Amen. Yes. I don't want you to have graven images. We sign to it. That amen is your signature. We don't want you scolding on your parents. Amen. We hear that. We don't want you to remove that landmark set by Joshua in the priest. Amen. We hear it. We don't want you to take the blind and throw them out away. Amen. We don't want you to pervert judgment. Yes. Okay. We got it. We don't want you to lie to the father's wife. We got it. We. They are signing their name to the 12 of these curses. And God has them plaster them on stones to be, when you're walking through the lane, you say, what's, those st what's that, those rocks over there? And you walk up to and you read these. This is what God wants you to do, and this is what God does not want you to do. It's very serious. So these men, these women, are to teach their children. When we were back here, this is what we had an oath to God. We said, amen. Teach it. And then you teach it to grand, your grandchildren. Your grandparents, they were here at this spot. And this is what was said. And this is what they said. And then their grandchildren, your great, great grandparents were at this spot, at these stones with Joshua there. Joshua, the mighty Joshua, the great man of our stories of the nation of Israel, outside of Moses himself. They took those stones. They read these things out loud. And our your great-great-grandparents said, Amen. We're not going to do it. And then the great-great-grandparents. And the great-great-great-great-grandparents. And even today, these words, it is in our history that these things we are not to do as Jews. We are not to do as Christians. And we should shout, Amen. They're vile. They're wicked. 